Welcome to part three in how to play shootout hockey tabletop board game. And in this episode, we will show how to assign penalties. So our sample teams are the 1974 Red Wings and the 1989 Calgary Flames from the great teams of the past set. Now on the team cards, players will have a penalty rating in this column right here. The penalty ratings range from the lowest reading, which is R, and it goes straight up through Z. R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. Now some of the higher letters can also ha um, have a higher rating. Uh, along with X, there's X2. Along with Y, there's Y2. And along with a Z rating, there's Z2 and the highest, which is Z3. So that's the range of possible penalty ratings that players can have. And actually with a few rare examples, like here's the 1974 Islanders, they have two players who do not have a penalty rating. Probably a very low number of uh, minor penalties on the season. So it is possible to, uh, for that to happen. So for example, we'll uh, draw an action card and demonstrate a penalty A, which is a minor penalty. So when you get this reading on the action card, penalty A versus the away team. I flip another card and you refer to the two letter grades in the penalty A box on the action card. Penalty A will always have two letter ratings and you're going to check for every player on the roster that has these ratings and they will get a minor penalty. So Detroit will be the road team and checking the ratings Okay, in this example, nobody on Detroit had a rating of X or Y2. So for this time sequence, no penalty happened, and you would flip another action card to begin the next time sequence. So let's uh, assume a different reading had come up. Let's say instead of that reading, we got V and Z2 for Detroit, possible penalty. So again, we check the roster on the penalty column. Okay, here's one player with V. We got Doug Roberts, Garnett Bailey, Ron Stackhouse, all have the, the V grade. And down at the bottom, we see that somebody on the reserves has the Z2 grade. So there's going to be four minor penalties assessed on this time sequence. Now, first, I'll show you the uh, reserves as long as that came up. One of the abstractions about this game is that since there are no line changes and um, setting um, who's going to dress uh, you know because he usually dress 17 18 skaters in the, the modern season uh, the, the the team is considered to have anyone on the roster available in any given game doesn't necessarily mean that every player is is dressed for that game but if um, a player happens to score a goal or an assist or a penalty in that game, it's considered that he happened to, to dress for that game. So, since the teams used more than 18 skaters over the course of a season, you know, tw uh, into the 20s sometimes, they have to represent every player. And players who've played few games for the team will be listed on the reserves. So the reserves are found on a different sheet that comes with the game. So here's the reserve players for the 74 season and we look down Detroit. So it's going to be one of these players on the reserve roster. And in this case to determine which player it is you're going to draw another action card and you're going to look at that two dice number up here. It will be something from 11th through 66. So that, well, let's say it was that card, 46. So uh, Jean Hamel would have gotten the uh, the minor penalty for being listed on the reserves, and a reading of Z2 came up. Now another abstraction about the game is the penalties 
uh, the multiple penalties that can occur on one time sequence. Now four minors were assessed during this action card draw. Does not mean that all four minors occurred at the same time. You only play out one power play over the next two minutes. The other three minor penalties are considered to have occurred elsewhere during the period and were successfully killed off by Detroit. So, say for example we play out this two minute power play, Calgary scores, instead of being as a team one for one on the power play, they're actually considered one for four because there was four minors called, the other three are considered to have occurred elsewhere in the period and were successfully killed off. A bit of an abstraction that might take you a little bit getting used to, but the way this works is that the, the team power play stats work out accurately over the course of a season if you're doing a replay. So we'll look at another possible reading under penalty A, and this can come up occasionally. It's referring you to the penalty B column. Now it's just going to be the penalty B column for Detroit because it was originally a penalty A reading. When penalty B comes up as an action card draw for both teams, it's a different procedure. But in this case, since it was a penalty A referring you to penalty B, you're only going to check Detroit for penalty B. So we'll flip another action card. This time we look in the penalty B column. And with penalty B, it, there's only going to be one letter grade, not two, like with penalty A. And if a player is rated V on Detroit, he's going to get 2 plus 2, double minor, for high sticking. The AHS stands for high sticking. If you're using the dice version, there's a, uh, a penalty chart, which you'd be referring to instead of the action deck. And at the bottom it has the legend, which shows what the abbreviations stand for. There's the 2 plus 2, double minor, 4 minutes for high sticking. So let's check the roster, Detroit roster for any players rated V. And it was the same players that we checked previously, Roberts, Bailey, and Stackhouse. So in this inst instance, three players would get um, assessed a double minor. And again, over the next four minutes, you just play out one double minor, which is two two-minute minors back to back. The other two double minors are considered to have occurred elsewhere in the period and were successfully killed off by Detroit. So let's take another look at another possible reading that might come up under that penalty A referring you to penalty B. Now when you see two numbers instead of a letter grade, that's referring you to a player's fight rating. See the penalty is going to be 5 and the F is for fighting. Now the penalty rating is, the, the excuse me, the fight rating is different from the penalty rating. The penalty rating is a letter grade. Next to it in the column will be the player's fight rating. Now not every player on the roster is going to have a fight rating. The most um, fight ratings a team will have would be 5 and these are numbered 1 through 5 but some teams do not have 5 different fighters some may only have 1 or 2 so here's uh, some examples um, Nick Libet rated 5 Calgary was a high penalty team that year so they've got Doug Roberts at 2 Joel Otto at 5, Jim Peplinski's a 4 and here Tim Hunter he got into so many fights that he's rated 1 and 3. So anytime a 1 and a 3 comes up in a fight, Tim Hunter is going to be involved. So back to the example, we're checking Detroit on a penalty B. So the first number represents the team that you're checking, like the instigator. And the second number is the fight rating of a player on the opponent team. So we're looking on Detroit roster for a player rated 1 at fight. 4, 3 someone on the reserves is rated a 2, but there's nobody rated 1. So if the instigator team does not have a player that matches the fight rating, then no fight occurs, the, that, that play sequence is ended, and you draw a new action card and start a new play sequence. There was no, no penalty on that, uh, on that time sequence. So look at a different example here. Now here's a different example of a penalty B versus home and away. 
Now when this reading comes up, you're going to check both teams, starting with the away team, for a penalty B. And if a fight result comes up for either team, the fight result always takes precedence over any other penalties that may be assessed. Like, let's say Detroit is assessed a double minor, you check them first. And let's say you go over to Calgary and a fight comes up, you ignore the double minor to Detroit, the fight that Calgary instigated is the penalty that occurred in that uh, time segment. So let's flip another card and check penalty B. Reading of uh, a rating of X2, going to be 2 plus 2, double minor, and the R is for roughing. So remember, we check Detroit first. And in this case, there's nobody on the roster rated X2. So nothing's going to happen with Detroit, but we still have to pick another action card and check Calgary now. Remember, you check the home team first, and then the, uh, excuse me, the road team first, and then the home team. So checking Calgary, any player rated Z2 is going to get a five-minute major for slashing. So checking Calgary's roster, oh, we got three. We had three players rated Z2. Suter, Merzen, and Ramage all are going to get a five-minute major for slashing. And again, you're only going to play out one five-minute power play over the next five action cards. The other two slashing penalties are considered to have occurred elsewhere in the period and were successfully killed off. So that's one example. Uh, let's look at a different one here. Okay, now let's say this was a, a, a different, the, the penalty B for ho uh, home and away had come up. So let's say the W was the uh, result. And we'll check the away team first, Detroit. That was double minor for high sticking. Any player rated W. And Detroit does have a couple players, Bill Collins, Brent Hughes. So potentially they could get two players with a double minor, but remember we still have to check Calgary if a fight comes up, that will nullify the, the double minus to Detroit. So checking Calgary, any player with a rating of Z3 will get five minute major for high sticking. And they've got a bunch of players rated Z3. Gary Roberts, Mark Hunter, Jim Otto, Joel Otto, Jim Peblinski, and Tim Hunter. So since a fight reading did not come up for either team, both teams' penalties are assessed. So Detroit's going to have two players with a double minor. Calgary's going to have five minutes, uh, five players, with a five-minute high sticking penalty. And if you're familiar with some of the more complicated ways to uh, play out coincidental penalties, you'd play four minutes of four on four, and then one minute of a uh, one minute power play for Detroit because Detroit only got four minutes Calgary got five minutes and in this example both teams are penalized since there was no fight so let's check a different result let's see okay we'll look at an example of a uh, a fight reading, two, uh, two versus two. Now let's say again we're checking the road team first. The road, the the uh, instigating team, fight rating first has to be a two in order for the fight to occur. If the fight occurs, it happens with the two rated player on the opposition. So checking Detroit for a play with fight rating two, and it's going to be a player on the reserves. We'll check that reserve list again. And it's Brian Bugsy Watson. No surprise there. He led the league in penalties that year. And yeah, there's the two. So he, uh, Bugsy Watson is the instigator fighter. And you look for the number two rated player on Calgary, and it's Gary Roberts. So you give them both five minutes for fighting. And since the fight came up on the first check for the away team, there's no need to check a penalty rating for the um, for the home team because remember if fight takes precedence over any other penalties that are called so if the fight happens on the first check 
you don't need to check again. So let's check another uh, sequence of cards. Let's say the Z comes up um, as the reading for the away team. Check Detroit for any players rated Z for a uh, 2 plus 2 double minor for roughing. So looking on Detroit. Okay, they have no players rated Z. So Detroit's not going to be assessed anything. Now we check the home team, Calgary. And it's going to be a fight, five minutes for fighting, potentially, if Calgary has a fighter rated 1 and it'll go against the number one player on Detroit. So Calgary definitely definitely has a one. We already saw uh, Tim Hunter was rated a one and a three. So Hunter's going to instigate the fight. There's definitely going to be a fight because the instigating team had the rated fighter. Now we check Detroit and <clears throat> there is no one on the roster rated one. But the fight still occurs because the instigating team had a player whose number matched the, the uh, indicated number. So in this case, you could just pick one of these other players um, to, to uh, engage Tim Hunter in the fight. You could either do a dice roll, or you could just select whoever you want. You want to give Bugsy Watson his, uh, his minutes, you can let him uh, get into another fight. And you've got uh, Watson versus Hunter in the penalty box for five minutes. Look at another possible reading. Let's say this reading came up for Detroit. Uh, checking Detroit first. The number one player on Detroit versus the number two fighter on Calgary. Five for fighting. So checking Detroit. Now remember they do not have a player rated one fighting. Even though Calgary does have a player rated two for a fight, there is no fight on this um, penalty check because the instigator team, Detroit, did not have a player rated one. So no fight, and you would draw another action card to go th to the next uh, time sequence. So that about covers it with the penalties. Uh, one other possible thing which we haven't covered in the past videos, and again this is another um, abstract part of the game, is that you'll notice some players on a team's roster have the uh, the number sign next to their name, Ron Stackhouse. That indicates a player who was on the roster who was on two teams that year. They were traded during the season, so they're actually listed with two teams. Stackhouse is also listed with the Penguins that year because he spent time on both teams. Now, when you're replaying uh, a season with either of these teams both of these players are potentially on the roster for every game of the season for that team even though they were traded at some point during the season because their scoring assist and penalty ratings are all calculated to work out accurately for whatever their real life stats were only prorated over the course of a full season uh, the only time you would have an issue is when these two teams are playing each other. Obviously, Stackhouse can't be on the roster of both teams. And in that case, there's a uh, separate chart that you refer to for two team players. Players who were traded during the season. So this is from the 74 season. And you just look up Stackhouse on the list. Um, so, and to determine which team he is on for that game when the two teams are playing each other. So you roll one dice. If it's one to three, he's on the Red Wings. If it's four to six, he's on the Penguins for that game. And so let's say it came up four to six. And he's considered on the Detroit roster for this game. That means if Stackhouse readings come up for Detroit, excuse me, he's on, did I say, he's on, he's on Pittsburgh for this game, let's say. So if any of Stackhouse's readings come up while he's uh, while you're rolling for Detroit, let's say a scoring uh, chance comes up for, for letter Z, or a penalty comes up for V, you do not give him the scoring chance and you do not give him the penalty because he is not considered on the roster. In the case of the scoring chance, 
you would draw another action card and get a different letter and some other player on the team is going to uh, have a scoring chance in the case of the penalty you could just just ignore it um, there's several as we saw there's several other players on the roster rated V so if a V rating came up only those two players would have it and you would just skip Stackhouse in that instance okay so I think that just about covers um, all aspects of the game and as you can see it's easy to play plays quickly and it's uh, quite addictive once you get uh, going on it you can see that you can knock out four games in an hour it's more of an incentive to take a crack at attempting a full season replay with the entire league which if you try that with other games that are a bit more comprehensive and take longer to play it could be a real um, daunting task but with shootout hockey the potential is there to to replay a full season so thanks a lot for watching and I hope you'll um, check out the game check the uh, the link at the end of the video to see where to purchase the game and again thanks for watching bye